You don't need to be smart to be a topper. You just need to be disciplined and have a plan. I've spent the past 15 years of my life preparing for some or the other kind of exam. I'm 23 right now and I was sent to a hostel when I was in class 6. Classes from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. exams every single week. And then slowly came the 10th board exams. Getting into class 11, 2 exams a week and then board exams again. Class 12, 3 exams a week, board exams again and then came a lot of college entrance exams. I thought college would be peaceful but then came mid sem exams, end sem exams during 5 years of college. And at the end of college, 50 to 60 campus placement exams for me to finally get a job. You see that sums up to be something around 700 exams, not even counting the small classes and lol. So basically almost my entire life was filled with exams. Some of them went well but some of them did not. But during the process, I've learned a lot of things about how to effectively study, revise and score the best marks possible. And through this video, my goal is to make sure that you get all of the knowledge that I've got over the past 15 years in the shortest amount of time possible. Because whenever you're going to give an exam from now, I want to make sure that you yeah. give your best. I'm not gonna lie, dollar has gonna yagi her brain fry. My lady papa zenny at her. So I want to start this video with like a personal life story. When I was in school, I was this above average kid. And then intermediate, I was in top four or five in the class. But for the first time when I actually went to college, my first semester CGPA was 6.64. Instead of looking for my name from the top, I had to look from bottom. And for the first time in my life, I just felt heartbroken. Like how can this even happen? But slowly, things got better. Like the next semester I scored 7.3 and then I scored 7.9 and then I scored 8.12 and then I scored 8.59 and it just kept improving after that. And I finally graduated with one of the highest packages from my department in my batch. I mean, I think it's highest or it should be at least one of the highest. Because back in college, I slowly started to understand how my friends, the toppers at IIT Kharagpur were studying. So I'll also include everything that I've learned from my friends, hundreds of books and tons of podcasts that I had the opportunity to learn. Let's get started. First things first, you need to understand that studying to become an expert in a subject and studying for an exam are not exactly the same. And this video is majorly about how to actually study for an exam. We'll start with some of the basics and then actually get into the process of studying and giving an exam and finally end with slave food and lifestyle that you have to follow to maximize your preparation. Let's start with one of the biggest misconceptions about the best time to study. Is it early in the morning or the late night? Well, it depends upon two things. The first thing, your energy levels. And the second thing, the external distractions. So early in the morning, your energy levels are usually high. You'll have a fresh mind and most of the people won't even be awake so that they can disturb you. So that's one optimum time to study. But what if you are not a morning person? What if you feel like shit when you wake up early in the morning just like me? Simple, take a 25 minute nap and then wake up to study for three hours straight. We'll exactly talk about how long this session should be and all of those things in a while. But for now, the goal is you should not be reachable. And especially if you're a night person, here's a great tip for you. Like start waking up 45 minutes before the usual time that you wake up and use that time to actually study something before you actually start your day. The 45 minutes to one hour time right after you wake up is one of the golden times to study. Start utilizing it. Now the second thing is about how long should you be studying per session. See your brain performs better when you study in chunks. So instead of studying for 5 hours continuously, where after a point your brain gets exhausted and the study session is no longer effective. Study for 45 minutes, take a 5 minutes break. Again, recharge your brain, study for 45 minutes more, take a 5 minutes break. Do this 3 or 4 times and this entire process will be more effective. So now you might ask me like, what do you do in the break? Go out, drink some water, go out on a walk, look at the sky. But never, I mean never, open your phone or start watching YouTube videos. And now as the basics are clear, let's get into the actual process of studying for an exam. Step 1. This is where most of the intelligent students actually mess it up. I'll tell you why, but the first step to preparing for any exam is actually knowing the syllabus and just sticking to it. I've seen a lot of my friends during class 11th and 12th actually studying from college textbooks. They felt that they are smart and they wanted to get deeper into the concepts and then they went overboard with things which are not even present in the syllabus. The result? Other students who actually stick to the syllabus scored way better. So instead of doing an ego massage and telling yourself that you are smart, just know your syllabus properly and stick to it if you just want to score very well in the exam. The now the next step in the process is a bit more important than this. It's in fact the most important step in the entire process of studying for an exam. The step number two, find the best resources. The coaching that you choose, the books that you follow, the test series that you take, the revision series that you take and the most importantly, 
the teachers that you follow these things define more than 50% of your preparation because just think about it one good book or one good teacher can entirely change your life so put efforts in the beginning of your preparation even before you actually start preparing to find the best teachers the best books the best test series and all of those things i mean ask your seniors connect with the toppers of the exam to know how did they prepare where did they prepare and what books have they used during the preparation do your research well and once you actually figure out and decide what books are you going to use stick to them throughout the preparation because it's not about solving 20 different books it's about solving one or two good books 20 times but again if you're just a college student and are preparing for semester exams it's kind of a bit easier because you just need to find the best youtube playlist of that particular lecture or the chapter and then go to your topper friend ask him for the notes find the previous year questions and your job will be done and now let's go to the step number 3 Once you gather all the resources that you have and you know the syllabus well the third step is actually about studying I mean it's not as easy as I just said it people have spent centuries and centuries trying to find out the best study techniques in fact the initial study techniques were developed in 500 BC so when someone says just go sit study it doesn't work like that and even if it does 90% of the times it's not as effective as it should be so listen to me carefully we've already talked about the best time to study along with how long should you study per session it's something around 3 to 4 hours with a 5 minutes break after every 45 minutes some people also call this a focus sprint and you should ideally be doing something around 2 to to three focus sprints every single day which results in 6 to 12 hours of study time and also there's this crazy graph of your marks versus how long do you study for example people who study zero number of hours usually end up scoring zero but people who study something around 2 to 3 hours they end up scoring some amount of marks and this graph keeps on increasing and maxes out in the region of 7 to 11 hours but after that there is a dip because if you start studying more than 11 hours you'll start compromising on things like sleep food and that reduces the performance of the brain and you see we all watch some lectures or classes and some people say that making notes is bullshit i agree if you can gasp everything the first time that you actually listen to a class but most of us we are normal students we need the notes not just so that we can read it again and again and again but the notes acts like a reminder of the bits and pieces of the class that we actually listen to and if made well your notes can act like a very powerful tool to unlock the photographic memory so don't make your notes boring make it look interesting with diagrams tables and all of those things and while i say this there's actually no point of making short notes from textbooks like ncert instead it's better to read it again because come on remembering the short notes isn't cool enough you know what's cool I remember in the entire fucking yeah, NCERT textbook. Make it, make it, make it That's cool. Hey, stand up guy born 10 toes. Big body pull up in a ring. I remember talking to a girl who has read the entire NCERT 50 times, 50 to 60 times, and she finally ended up scoring All India rank 7 or 8 in the final examination in the NEET examination. That's how powerful it is. And you can do that too. Now let's actually move to the next step. Step number 4, which is about practice, revision and remembering things. Let's actually divide this step into two different parts. The first part is where you actually have to remember a lot of things like inorganic chemistry or social studies or something like that. And the second part is where you actually have to solve questions like physics or maths and something like that. Our brain remembers things either in the form of stories or images. through repetition or emotion and we can process images up to 60000 times faster than text we just take 13 milliseconds to process an image and a lot of study techniques the mnemonics like the memory castle the link method the story method they have been developed using the same methods to sum it up whenever you are reading something that you want to remember read it like a story or at least connect it to a story that is already present in your mind for example if you want to remember a random set of words like kerala italy hitler elephants organic chemistry maggi you can just remember it like one day i was going from kerala to italy and i've seen hitler on an elephant eating organic maggi because now it's a story you'll remember it much better you can also connect these words to the place that you know for example if you are walking inside a room you can attach each of these words to a specific location and then you can imagine as if you are walking through that room and you can retrieve those words from that exact place this is also called the memory castle method i mean you don't need it but but what you need to know is our brain learns things much faster when it already knows something about the subject because it will be easier for the brain to make connections inside it and that's exactly why like reading the textbook before you actually listen to the class reading the ncert textbook even before you listen to the lecture is like 2 to 3 times more effective because it will be easier for your brain to connect the new information to the existing information that you already have while you actually read the ncert textbook but these are more like short term memory techniques and even if you remember that i've gone from kerala to italy and i've seen hitler on an elephant eating organic maggi 
you won't remember it forever and the only way to remember it for longer duration is through spaced repetitions where you're trying to revise in frequent intervals and the more times that you actually revise it the better that you actually remember it and you don't actually need to reread it because there are things much better than rereading the same thing and that is called the active recall where you try to ask questions about the information that you are actually read and then you try to make your brain retrieve that information for you so instead of just rereading the same thing saying that i've gone from kerala to italy and i've seen hitler on an elephant eating organic maggi start asking questions about it where was i going when i've seen hitler whom did i see when i was going to italy questions like this understood and this is the actual technique that they use in every single textbook available first they give a concept and then they ask questions about it does that make sense right now but then there are some worse schools here and there where they try to give the same questions which are present in the textbook in the examination like what's the point of reading the entire concept then what's the point of reading the entire textbook then i mean that's a story for a different day but now as we have just discussed about how do we actually read and remember things the next one is something more important than just remembering things which is about problem solving like in maths physics or similar subjects Whoa! you see some people are really good at remembering things but they're not as good when it comes to logical reasoning they're not good at solving physics they're not good at solving maths questions why is that so that's because studying physics and studying inorganic chemistry are completely two different things and no one teaches you the difference none of the schools teach you the difference and then they just expect you to study a study mark get marks study get marks study get marks no it doesn't work like that being good at maths or physics is mostly about pattern recognition there are less things to remember and more things to decode like once you understand a concept you'll be deriving formulas over there and then you'll solve some example questions and finally you'll end up with 50 to 100 practice questions and now when an entirely new question is asked your brain looks at all the previous questions that you have solved it will try to decode what are the patterns inside that and then will give you an idea to solve the new question so the better that you understand the concept the more number of questions that you practice the more number of examples that you see the easier it will be for you to actually answer a new question and not just the number of practice questions it's about the variety of practice questions it's about the range of types of questions that you have solved you become good at solving problems by solving problems not by reading concepts so now as we are done with studying practicing and revising let's actually move to the most uncertain part giving an exam see let me be honest 90% of the times if you actually prepare well for an exam you'll end up scoring well but sometimes even if you don't prepare well for an exam you can still score well if you know how to effectively give an exam but a very few times even if your exam preparation is very very well you'll still end up scoring horrible listen to this carefully because i still feel very very bad in fact i've cried a lot of times because i knew i could have done so much better in the exam but the results were just horrible and i don't want you to go through that shitty phase of life i'll keep this short but listen there are three things that you can do the first thing is make sure that your energy levels are high during the time that you give the examination for example if your final exam is between 2 pm and 5 pm make sure that you at least spend 30 days before the exam to build your life in a way that you would be most active between 2 pm and 5 pm now the second thing is the way that you attempt the question paper especially if it's a competitive examination make sure that you solve the question paper in layers first layer easiest questions which won't take a lot of time second layer easy questions third layer moderate questions fourth layer the difficult question and finally at the end if you actually have the time then go for the questions which you don't even know remember this no one cares if you might have solved the most difficult question in the examination or not at the end of the day what matters is how many questions have you solved now the third thing understand that giving an examination is a skill and you can improve in that skill by giving more number of mock tests got it so that is the most comprehensive and the shortest guides to study revise and give an exam in the best possible way so i've tried to keep this as short as possible but if you still have any other doubts about studying just go to the comments below and ask your doubts over there and i'll try my best to reply to each and every one of you and if you actually felt this video helpful here's a bonus tip for you try to find a study buddy a person with whom you can you know share about your preparation with, with whom you can actually sit and study a person who can keep you accountable find your study buddy because that can be a game changer because alone you can do little but together you can do so much and finally share this video with one of the friends that you actually care about because we have to make sure that our friends also give their best because the stronger that your friends get the more stronger that you will get in life remember this so with that being said all the best for every single exam that you give from now you have to be a topper i'll see you soon bye bye did again who told you that i was finished fresh off the plane with a new many petty my hair stay late and you know i get paid 100 dollar bills